Hello everyone. Now uh, we are at a stage where we are where we actually want to move on to the GraphQL stuff to see uh, to see it in action. The first thing that we will do is we will of course do a composer require command and pull in the new wave lighthouse package. We've gone through the documentation, different documentation sections in the first video, so I'll spare you that trouble again and we are actually in the process of installing the package and uh, the next command that we'll give is uh, we'll publish the schema all right and uh, this is essential because this is going to give you this uh, schema.graphql file now this this file actually is the is is the single source of truth for most uh, GraphQL uh, projects. So I'll just get rid of the comments because they're basically too simplistic. So uh, I don't really like all that clutter and like things are not very clear and stuff. I hope I don't delete any schema in the process. <laughs> but yeah, let's delete all these comments. They're too simplistic and they don't serve that will give us a lot of help in understanding things. Um, unique ID. We you know this is unique ID primary key. So we are these. These are too simplistic. So, I mean, um, don't take me wrong. I'm not in the favor uh, of not writing comments. Uh, uh, you you should you should actually write comments where needed. But you know, for something really simple. It actually adds to the pain of ready. It, it actually uh, is at the expense of readability, which we of course don't want. So we'll we'll get rid of uh, these comments. So now things are a lot clearer. So we have this type query uh, specified here, where we have uh, in in this object we have uh, the user model defined like this. So this actually means ID is going to be of type ID and it needs to be equal to this uh, for things to work. So we'll see in the search and different queries, it needs to be exactly equal to the ID. That means, that actually just means you can search the user model by ID. Uh, then there are rules, there is now, now this at the rate sign, this actually adds a directive. Now we have plenty of directives as I mentioned in the first video. Uh, with with the uh, with the GraphQL schema and and you actually add them uh, you can actually add them one by one you can see find you can see equal you can see rules you can see paginate you can see where so there are there are plenty out there that you you'll get used to pretty fast um, anyway so rules means basically you're just adding validation rules so no need to have a separate uh, just in in REST no need to have a separate rules class. No need to have a uh, um, uh, a controller with with you know with a lot of um, uh, validation. Uh, you can specify everything in line here. Uh, a lot of validation structure. You don't need that. You just need to specify everything here. Now prohibits email means you can either search with ID or with email. The same goes here. Prohibits ID. That means uh, you can either search by ID or by email. If you're searching by email, you can't search by ID and vice versa. So it's required without ID. So if you don't specify an ID, you need to actually specify an email and it has to be an email. So these are fairly simple. I believe you're, you're familiar with all of these. So you can find a user using the ID or the email. That's, that's all that it, this specifies. And this actually specifies the single uh, user thing. Uh, for users, for the, for the plural or fetching for fetching multiple records, you can actually search it by name and uh, the operator is like. So that means if the name is like the, the parameter, it should bring up the user. All right. So, um, <clears throat> so for strings, we tend to make it like because uh, like is more like it. But for, um, I mean, you can, you can type them. Um, for example, I'll, uh, I'll explain a bit more. Uh, for example, you can specify my name with, uh, or any name for that matter, with with capital, with with small letters or anything. So that's like, uh, that's why we use like in case of name. So this syntax here, this uh, you'll see this in in the schema as well as we build the schema. You'll see this that when whenever you're fetching multiple records, you use this type of array syntax. Uh, this bang or uh, 
<clears throat> or exclamation mark. This actually signifies that this thing is, uh, you have to absolutely return this. So, or it is required. So, so that's, that's basically the thing. Uh, then there is page in it. So there is the default count is 10. So per page, it has to be 10. You can change it to five or anything that you like. You can remove pagination entirely. If you want to do that, you, you can, uh, you can do that here, but I would recommend you keep page in it just by adding this directive here you add pagination and you'll also see paginated data uh, which you'll see further down the line anyways there is okay now we need to specify what type is the user uh, uh, we need to specify the user type and then we um, we specify what what type the attributes are so there's id uh, which is of type id then there's name is of type string email is of type string as well which we'll change later email verified it is date time but this is we are not always going to have this value so as you can see now this is not this is not required everything else is required but this is not required if we had a bang here this is going to become required uh created add updated that is of type date time which is being fetched from the new wave uh, lighthouse built-in scalars the scalars are basically types of data so you're actually going to bring in uh, a few more uh, scalars and that is what we'll get to next so now you can you can do you can run with this as well you can always keep email as string if you add phone you can add phone as string you can add a date as uh, as a string that's fine and that's how most people write their their data write their um, schema but uh, you uh, it's better that you actually specify an exact type but before we do that we'll skip the lumen part and we'll also add the id support so that that helps with the uh with the auto suggest and everything so auto complete and everything and, and then we'll also install the graphql dev tools which is uh the graphql dev tools which is also called the laravel graphql playground uh graphql playground sorry so after installation you can visit slash uh, graphql to try it so We'll go to localhost and you'll see that we have, because we had run sud, uh, the all the containers are running here uh, and this is going to show you your project. Okay, you can also access it from here. You can open it from here and that will also open to the same localhost. Okay, so we'll do graphql slash graphql and yeah, there we go. So we already have some data uh, and <clears throat> I don't know for some reason it's deciding to be really slow right now but we already have from the last episode in this setup you saw that we already have uh, 10 users about 30 speakers and 10 events. So uh, once we come here you'll see we'll just uh, just get rid of everything and uh, we'll go to the user. All right. So this is this is coming from. You can guess where this is coming from. This is actually coming from here. So now you can do users and user and users. Uh, so if you are looking for a single user, you can either search it by email, remember, or you can search it by ID. All right. Uh, okay. And then created at email, verified at ID, name, updated at. All right. So you just select everything. And then you specify one of the emails on one of the users here. So you come here and you copy one of the emails and you come and paste it here. Now, speaking of this, if you also specify the ID, now remember why this is, why this is prohibited. This is prohibited because, uh, okay. So it tells us the ID field prohibits email from being present. The reason is ID 11 belongs to, ID 11 actually does not exist, but maybe ID 11, ID 10 exists to this user and email exists to, an, uh, sorry, uh, is attached to another user. So we can use only one of the two. All right. So that search is, that brings the user for us. Okay. So one thing to remember is that we need to have, we have this equal here. So that means the email string needs to be, uh, <clears throat> Uh, needs to be exactly like uh, exactly like this it can we cannot use a part of this and uh, and think that it'll still work it won't work because this is not of type email so as you can see now that's the first stop so 
So as you can see, the validation is in place now. So this is this should be of type email when even when querying the data. So that's good, and um, at least we have some checks in place. And then okay, we'll go to users now, and we'll say first name page, and then we'll do okay. So so this is basic stuff now. First first means how many records do we want? We want first ten records. And we want if we want to search it by name, uh, search the users by name. We'll have to pick one of the users' names, and we'll put it here. And page we want the first page. All right, we want the first page, and we want all of this. Uh, okay, now specifying this is not really necessary. So uh, you can take out first, you can take out page one, and all that because you're only. Uh, searching for one user right now so that will still give you this record but if you are searching for multiple users and you're not specifying the the name as such we'll just get rid of it and build it from scratch so you say first I want first 10 records and I want uh, the first page of the first and uh, of, of the of all the records and if for first 10 maybe you don't need to specify but if you say first 30 and page 1, it'll just give you the first 10 uh, because per page it is supposed to be 10. So you just select everything here. And so that gives you the first 10, the first page as such uh, here. Um, now, if you say page 2, that I think that will give you this. Uh, okay. Now, because we are fetching a total of uh, 10, so we will do 20 and we'll do page 2. Okay, we uh, overall we just have 20, uh, sorry, overall we just have 10 users, so that won't work. So uh, we'll do that again with speakers. Okay, there you go. All right, if you change the pagination to B5, let's say, uh, then you know what will happen. This will, This is going to give you five and if we do first 10 and page one that will give you uh sorry let's uh with php you have to uh reload okay so this again gives you 10 but if we do five this will give you five if we go to page two did we save the schema file we did and um, that's count five so this will give you okay let's do page one that will give you different records okay um, let's do page two and that'll give you the the second records uh second five records okay so that's basically how you uh work with uh, with the pagination but there is more so say for example if you want the total number of uh, the, you want the count you get the count you want the current page which page we are on we are on page two right now if we do page one okay it'll tell you that the count is five but we are on current page the current page is one so the first item whether or not it has more pages last item last page how many records are there per page and how many records are there in total that will give you everything here so that's basically what we get extra as part of the paginator info so the count is five on this page the current page is one or the first item is one it has more pages all right so if we do 10 okay it doesn't have more pages now and then last item is 10 and uh, last page is one Per page, we are displaying ten records, and there's a total of uh, total of ten. So basically, uh, from uh, the looks of it, you can the default count is five, but you can actually override it from here. Uh, now, um, so that's that about users. Let's add some speakers and some events now. So we'll just start with the uh, with the speaker right now, or maybe let's start with the event. So let's I'll do event in small and uh, that will give us uh, okay. So we'll we'll accept the suggestion and so event is basically ID is of the type ID and it it needs to be equal to this and we can actually add these rules as well. We can simply copy paste 
so you can say if you are using multiple stuff then you can say that uh, prohibits email and stuff but there's no need required without email there's no need I think there's no need for these here as such and we can simply do with you know search for an event using the ID and find it and then there is events so we'll again accept the suggestion the suggestions are really good so that this is also actually this actually helps you in putting the schema together very quickly so event and events so now we are searching by name you can search with any other trait as well so for example uh, with any other attribute as well so for example if you go to the events and you want to search by city you can also say city and you can search by city where operator is like this so we can and now we can add some rules let's say sorry rules and uh, so you can say name is required but that's not <clears throat> that's not a sensible approach so we'll do prohibits prohibits city required without city that that looks like a good approach okay and the same goes here so you can say prohibits name required without name so you can use use this that means that either name or city can be used to look for the events uh, then we'll go to we'll move to speaker and we'll do the same with speaker and we'll then do speakers and we'll do the same with speakers and we can I think name should be fine we should be able to search a speaker by name for now and we can add other stuff later if we want to uh, okay so now comes to defining the type and we will see some fun stuff so we'll start with the event there is ID there's name there's date so we'll just open the events migration on the side to see how things go. That's why I've chosen the larger of the two screens that were available to me so that I can show you everything on the on the side. So over here we'll do we'll do it like this. Um, <clears throat> we'll start with ID. So ID is al always uh, required. Then there is name. Then there is city. Then there is. Uh, date and then there is uh, no okay okay now date needs to be of type date uh, then uh, we need to do venue that will be a string and that also need that's also required we'll also add the online boolean and that is of type boolean so everything is fairly it's, it's almost the same so date and time so that's it so we have name city venue date and online this is a boolean and that's it so we'll just go with this and then we'll do type speaker as well so again we'll open speakers and we'll open it to the side so that we don't miss anything there's a few properties here so there we go Okay, so we'll do type speaker and let's see if it's generating the right one. It's saying ID, name, email, and then there is it, it has missed bio. So string remember text of any type is going to be uh, uh, text of any type is going to be <coughs> uh, string. So whether it's a short string or if it's a long string and photo because we're also going to save it in the string format here. So photo is going to be, photo is always is probably not going to be pro, uh, provided always. So let's also change this to nullable. Yeah, so we can. OK, uh, photo nullable is there and then there is Twitter. So I mean, the, they might not always have Twitter. We already have it as uh, we already have it as uh, nullable. So that should be fine. So we don't add it. See, we don't add a bang in front where whatever it's not required. So city is string. It's required. Country is required. It's a string and it's required and okay now comes the fun part and uh, we'll get rid of uh, this 
and you don't always need timestamps as well if you want you can add timestamps but if you want you can get rid of them but now now we can do event id right event id that's what we're going to do right no because we've already specified the event type and we already have the event relationship specified on the uh, on the controller on the model sorry so we are going to ask for the event in question all right so the speaker um, is associated to this event and that event needs to show here but are they supposed to always be associated with one no because this is nullable so we'll again remove the bang and and i think we should be good right now so it looks like we have everything covered name id name email bio photo twitter city uh country event everything is there and let's do the inverse of this as well. So if we go here, we can we can also do speakers. Now remember, this is coming from the relationship on the on the table. So you'll see this syntax because we're we're fetching multiple speakers here. So we'll we'll use this. So again, just to remind you, if I go back to the event uh, mod model, you'll see that the it has uh, has many relationship with speaker speakers. Uh, speaking of that, we'll we'll actually add. He has many here and we'll also add the uh, belongs to here so now this is also these are also these relationship directives are also there so you you can actually add these just to add a bit more clarity and 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 you know specify that this is why they are coming here so we'll just go with this and probably a speaker is not going to have a mm, Probably an event is not always going to have a speaker, so we are going to remove this bang. That means there can be something that, and, and there probably can't be something in certain cases. Okay, so we are back. And it looks like we made a mistake somewhere. It doesn't like something. Okay, uh, right. Let me once again. First type load date. Make sure that the date is present in the schema definition. All right, date is not there according to this. So we'll see. We we have date time, but we don't have date. Now that's a good. Now that's a good point where we should actually pull in our our other package, which is like the MML GraphQL scalars, and I think. Okay, GraphQL PHP scholars. Why is it opening the activity page first? Let's just go to code. Okay, we are already there. And what we'll do is we'll pull this, we'll use this compose required command and we'll install the package here. So it'll pull in through composer. And you'll see that uh, composer, okay. Now the next step is that we will pull in date. Now date is uh, how we'll do that. We will actually uh, okay. Uh, we'll actually pull it here. So we'll say scalar date, and we'll use the scalar directive. And uh, it seems to suggest that we should bring it from here but we'll do something else we'll do mml graphql scalars date so that's basically how we are going to pull it so we're not going to pull it from the new wave lighthouse package we're going to pull it from the date uh, from the graphql scalars package that we just installed and i think this should work and it should get rid of the the error here awesome so i think along the same lines we should also do email so email is going to give us precisely emails all right and we'll, we'll go as as we go along if we need any other types like json or something we'll we'll pull it in so so now we'll look for all the instances of email string okay looks like there are three and we'll change them all to email of type email so this is going to extend this type of scalar and so everywhere we have email now we have email as the type and date has of type of type date and <coughs> and there's no squeaking so yeah 
So that's pretty much it. We have put together an API that can for that can get you users and events and speakers just like that without any issues whatsoever. So we have this event. Let's uh, let's search the event by ID and let's show their speakers. Okay. Uh, if you look closely, there's double nesting here. You don't need to do that. Uh, that's one of the things maybe that's one of the areas where maybe GraphQL can actually uh, improve a bit uh, okay now this is for speakers and this updated at end venue is basically for the event so we'll just uh, look for the first event and we'll see so as you can see now on the event um, we specified the speakers relationship and that is actually showing here so that would show us the first event with uh, and then it would show us the speakers now the bio looks a bit too much here so we might not want bio everywhere so we'll just in the typical graphql way um, if it doesn't fit our space uh, for example if if this is a just a this is just a profile page we just take the bio out and that's basically how you just query the schema like uh, in the way in which you just get what you exactly want. So we can just get rid of bio for now. I mean, over here, so it's still there on the schema and everything, but yeah, okay. Now, if you want to do some adjustments, you can actually do that. So instead of um, these being here, you can actually add them here and that would still fetch it. Uh, and that would actually, uh, you can do some other uh, checks as well you can do some other adjustments as well so if you want to bring something uh, take something up or down that should still work okay speaking of this you actually have uh, another thing you can actually type these as well whenever you are typing it will actually give you an idea so for example it's auto auto complete so this will actually give you an idea that you're looking for updated at and um, let's also try the same for twitter that's giving you Twitter and then there is update to that so anything that you type is actually autocomplete and so that's why I mean initially when I said it, this is there's auto documentation so there is as you can see there is no postman collection to put together so you just need this you just need the graphical playground you go there and everything that you've done till now that reflects here there's no mutations here we, once we add mutations in the next video that's going to also show here that's going to also show here and the mutations are every single mutation that we have added is going to show here provided everything is correct so yeah this is uh, i think that would be pretty much it for this video uh, we have covered queries at length and we have covered how how things work with uh, with the type definition and everything and and how this is this is going to reflect in the graphical schema so that's your um, that's that's uh, that's that I think for this video and uh, let's cover uh, let's get to mutations next in the next video and uh, we'll go from there to more advanced stuff thank you